All right, now that I've formulated a game plan, I still got to think about this a little bit. Here's, here's my existing lights, and here's the seam right there. And initially, I was hoping I was going to be able to patch this without getting too close to the edge of the light fixture here and around the trim right there. And, you know, I think the best thing for me to do is to take these two light fixtures down. I really didn't want to do that, but it'll get me a better finish because I can float this out the proper way. You can see from here, if I float, I'm, I have to stop it around here and kind of do it tighter there, whereas here, I'm probably going to bring it out a little bit further, both directions. You know, right here, I don't have much room. Plus, when I prime it and paint it, I've got to stop right in here. And if I have these light fixtures down, I can paint this with my rollers nice and straight along here, and I can blend in the paint, okay, to the existing. Because right now, I don't think I'm, I'm going to have to paint the entire ceiling, but I want to patch it good enough to where you don't really see it at the pat, at the sheetrock patch. Now, and that means when I get, when I do this painting, I'm going to, I'm going to take this paint out fairly far to the right and also to the left. So when I paint, I don't want to just paint to there because then even if this paint is, is almost perfectly matched, you might say, oh yeah, there it is right there because somebody knows where this, where this patch is. But if I take the paint over far enough to the left, you're not even going to see that. Somebody's eye is going to look at that and they're going to think, wow, that blends right into the ceiling. So my best bet with all of that is I'm going to take those light fixtures down. I know it's going to take me a little bit more time, but my patch is going to come out way better. So think about that if you've got any light fixtures in your way, or anything else for that matter. Now, I'm already starting to think about my paint before I even do the job. Wow. Uh, now, this isn't how the light on the ceiling is going to look. I've, I've got my drop light on here. I'm going to unplug that for a minute and just see where the natural light drops on the ceiling. I've got all the lights on in the kitchen and uh, the blinds are open over there. And this is about all the light that's going to be on this ceiling. Kind of dark in here. This is only an eight foot ceiling and that's kind of a good thing for my point of view because my patch should blend in good. It's not going to be so bright that I'm going to see exactly where it is, especially if the paint doesn't match 100%. But see, if I take that paint out over here, it's just a little bit shady over here and over in here, okay? So when I paint, I'll probably, I'll probably come out this far, maybe even a little bit further. And then I'll come out, maybe out to here somewhere. So when somebody realizes that a patch has been done, their eye is going to look from here to there. So that's why you don't want to just do a sheetrock patch from there to there, and then prime and paint from here to here. You can prime just to here, just over the patch, and then when we paint, we're going to feather that paint, we're going to taper that paint out further, okay, on both sides. That's going to kind of trick your eye, especially because we've got some shadows up there in the ceiling and all that. Somebody's going to think that I patched the ceiling perfectly and the paint matched perfectly, even if the paint doesn't match 100%, like I say, you might be able to get away with it. And I think I have the exact same paint for this ceiling. Time will only tell. Once I put that paint up and look at it, if I make a determination it's not blending in far enough, worst case scenario, I'm going to have to paint this whole ceiling. The whole ceiling in the kitchen. And then 
I would have to paint this ceiling of this room. That's worst case scenario if you don't want to see your patch and if your paint does not match 100%. Okay? But enough of that. Let's get on with our project. There's a few things I'm going to do. I've got my counter here. I'm going to put my trusty craft paper down on this yet, yet again. My craft paper is going to come in handy. I just used it on another project and there's my roll. I'm going to use that same little roll. I got plenty for right here. I got a ceiling fan in the other room that I've got going on. You see it over there peeking through the door? I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to make sure my air is not moving around because once I start messing around with this ceiling, you'd be surprised at where that sheetrock dust finds itself. I got black countertops here and all that. but. You know, I'll do the best I can, and then after that, I'll clean up, vacuum, wipe everything down. Always do a good job with cleaning up before you call a project good. You'll be glad you did. Now, here's one more thing I want to point out before I go any further. I know I told you we were done talking about painting and stuff, but that's another reason why I want to take these two light fixtures down, because I'm going to, I'm going to run the paint at least over to here and if I leave this up yeah I could tape and skim and finish around there and around there but then when I prime it I'm gonna have to cut that in with the paintbrush and then when I do the roller twice on my finished paint I'm gonna have to go around that so I don't hit anything here and it's just easier if I have those down. Then I can take the roller and go straight through there. Because if you try to, especially here where we're trying to match up the paint, you cut this in with a paintbrush around here and then do the roller. Your roller marks are going to be different than your paintbrush marks. So when you get all done, especially if you've got an eggshell or a semi-gloss on your ceiling, you get done, you're going to look around your, your, your light fixture or your trim pieces, you're going to say, what happened there? Because it's all it'll be all glossy around there. Well, here, I, this is a flat ceiling, but I'm just giving you hints for your project. Even though this is a flat ceiling, I don't want to cut around this with my paintbrush and all that. Have a chance of hitting this. And then besides, if these move around a little bit, or if I ever have to replace these or something, it's not painted underneath there. And if the next trim is smaller than that, or if this trim moves, you, you see a mark around there and an edge buildup of paint. You know, that's why I'm going to spend a few more minutes. I'm going to turn the light switch off, make sure everything's off to these lights, and then I'm going to take these down, get ready for my project.